I say something about Malaysia, I say something about the state of Malaysia, and I think it's partly because we live in, in, in extraordinary times. We live in extraordinary times uh, because things which ought to be ordinary are rendered extraordinary. Um, and what strikes me about the book, uh, basically, they are just academic lectures, they are lectures of a historian. Uh, what strikes me about them as a historian is how, how mundane they are. How mundane they really are, except in the context, of course, in, in, a, in a context of a, of a country like Malaysia, just to be a history teacher uh, turns you into a rock star somehow. <laughs> Which I, I'm not complaining, by the way. Yeah? <laughs> I, I'm not complaining. Uh, um, but it's interesting because it's a statement about how history is contested in, in Malaysia. But think about it. Uh, those of you who are here for the Hang Tuah lecture, and if you read it, it's the last lecture, it's lecture number six. Uh, what's the Hang Tuah lecture about? I mean, all I'm doing, I'm doing something very, very mundane. I, I'm simply reading the Hikai at Hang Tuah to the end. That's all. I'm just reading a book to the end. And why is that so extraordinary in the Malaysian context? I think it's partly because for too long, um, you know, what we've been taught and given as history, especially official history in this country, has been stuff that's, you know, half finished, half read, half digested, pre-digested and, and regurgitated back to us. And people are shocked sometimes when, you know, people were shocked when we did some of these lectures, probably because they said, yeah, this is all so interesting, where do you find it? Well, find it in the libraries for heaven's sakes. It's there. And that's the thing about what we were trying to do um, at the other Malaysia. And I'm very happy that Yusri is here. Where's Yusri, by the way? Yeah. Yusri, ladies and gentlemen, is the other half of the other Malaysia. And honestly, uh, if, if, if we are still running, if we have our website and we are still running after three years, all things are Yusri. He is, he is my better half in ever since. And, and it, we, when we started this, Project. It started as a column in Malaysia Kini. It's 10 years, by the way. It's 10 years. Uh, started as a column in Malaysia Kini, and it was just an attempt, uh, while I was a teacher at UM, to to write history for uh, you know everyday readers. And I was struck by how you know by the response that I got, and I was struck by how people were thirsting for history. And the book is dedicated, actually. <laughs> That's a young historian there. The book is, is dedicated to uh, you know the teachers who taught me, uh, my, my the four mentors that I mentioned, but all my teachers really, because I really think that contrary to, to Indonesia, a country I, I know and teach very well, where, where teachers really have some value. I mean over here, you know, I mean G. R. Rosa teaches better than, than academics. There's another underpaid academic at the back, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Asmi Sharon. Um, <laughs> and and um, and how you know doing the most basic thing, which is to teach. And that's the job of the school teacher. The, the historian simply tries to recover history. But what I suppose the other major was trying to do, above all, was to remind us that history is never linear. It's never determinate, and that history is a rich text. Today we are still debating about. You know, one Malaysia, United Malaysia, 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 what have you. But we, we still haven't defined what Malaysia is. And that's partly because there's this reluctance, almost a phobia, to look back into the past and to accept the fact that we have a complicated and complex past. It is a complicated past, and it's sometimes a difficult past, but it's also a past that makes all of us rich as a result. But what we really wanted to do in other Malaysia was to encourage people to write their own history. And that's why we took it out. We took it outside academia, we brought it, and I'm really thankful to, to Central Academics for giving us this venue and for supporting us all along, because we really wanted to demonstrate that you know history, apart from being a contested discipline, that also has to be a popular discipline. But popular history is not bad history, it's just history that's been democratized. And so what you have in, in, in the lectures, what you have in the book, is a sustained attempt to interrogate all these things, uh, to, to raise questions about the biographies of people, real or fictional, and to go against this attempt to compress and simplify the history that we are given as the national narrative, and to, to tell Malaysians that we, we make up Malaysia. Uh, but put aside all this talk about you know, capital develop, uh, capital driven development. It's not the skyscrapers, it's not the bridges, it's not the shopping malls that make up Malaysia. Malaysia is made up of Malaysians. And Malaysians are agents of history. 
and we are the custodians. We are the living books of Malaysian history. And so every Malaysian has an important story to tell. And I think the duty of the academic, the duty of the historian and school teacher is to try to look for these histories, to make them speak to each other, and to remind us that we are a nation that has always been in constant dialogue, when, and will always be in constant dialogue. So the, the good thing about being a historian is that you're never unemployed, because the history of Malaysia is a never-ending text. It's a story that doesn't have a full stop, which means I'll be employed for life, which is good. But it means that all of you are also producers of history, and you should always remember that. So next year we're going to continue this. I'm going to experiment with one thing that I've sounded pang uh, out. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try to do one lecture for kids. That's, that's going to be slightly terrifying. But uh, we're, we're, we're going to do that next year. Hopefully, fingers crossed, if my, 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 my blood pressure isn't too high. But um, like I said, you know, we did, I dedicated this book to all my teachers. But actually, I should have dedicated it to, to a student of mine. When I first started teaching in UM, this was the, the, the good old days or the bad old days uh, during the Reformasi when you actually had armored cars on campus, you know, at that time, 97, 98. I had a student who, who asked me a question one day and he said, why is it that the history books of Malaysia have no mention of women? And I gave her the only answer, the only honest answer I could give, which is, if the history books of Malaysia do not mention women, it's because that history book that you're looking for has yet to be written. And that's your duty as the student, as the academic, as the producer of history. And I think that's what all of us are doing. You know, Rather than to allow history to be monopolized by a group of elites who want to simplify it and use it for politically instrumental reasons, I think it is every Malaysian's right to feel that we are all part of the national narrative. We are all actors on this stage of human history, and I think we should play a starring role in our own history. And on that note, uh, I would like to, to follow up the theme um, that was raised in the quote earlier about feudalism and, and anti-feudalism. Uh, normally when you have these book launches, you have uh, VIPs, VVIPs, VVVIPs, or whatever, but you know, there is, a, there is a VIP, there is a very important person who I'd like to launch this book. And, I'd like to invite now uh, Sarah to come forward. And I'm going to have to hold the ribbon because there will be a twirl and there will be a ribbon cutting. Uh, this is the cutting of the ribbon, of course, is pregnant with symbolic value, but there is another long footnote, and I won't get into that. intelligent than a Malaysian politician. So. <laughs> so after looking to after looking through 23, 27 million candidates we chose Sarah. Um, here's a footnote of mine. Um, we settled on the title of this book literally the day before I had to register it at uh, the National Library. Um, we went through several title options. Um, unfortunately Farish rejected uh, what I suggested, which was uh, uh, what Kuke Kim didn't tell you, but... <laughs> because he's, because he's, 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 he's too nice. Um, and, and honestly, um, Farish's is a history textbook. I don't think so. I think it's, it's a romance. It's a love story. It's, it's written by someone who has a deep love for his country, for his surrounding, and for people, and for history, for truth. Uh, but. This love sometimes makes him frustrated and bitchy and, <laughs> and, and, and angry and depressed. Um, but which just goes to show that it's, it's a genuine love. It's not, it's not something that you just said, it's something that you really feel. And if you, like someone said, I think Alfian, uh, a Singaporean, quoted once, if you love this country very much, first it will break your spirit, then it will break your heart. 
uh, uh, so uh, I thought of quoting that. Um, so we have to end on something which I.